This is W.O.R. New York. Seven o'clock by Longines, the world's most honored watch. Product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. From New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men and more than 1,200 leading retail stores from coast to coast present that immortal character created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. <laughs> this week's story, The Adventure of the Uddington Witch. Yes, Watson. You say you saw a shadow dart into this forest after the murder? I did, Watson. And it was an extraordinary shadow indeed. What do you mean? I saw what was apparently a witch, Watson. A, a witch? Precisely. The Black Witch of Uddington. The local townsfolk say she still prowls this forest. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Watson. Good evening, Mr. Harris. And what adventure are you working on tonight, Doctor? One of the strangest and weirdest in my memoir. Holmes and I always referred to it as the adventure of the Uddington Witch. The adventure of the Uddington Witch. Sounds like something to raise the goose flesh, Doctor. Indeed it is, Mr. Harris. But first, Mr. Harris, I know you have something to say about Clippercraft clothes. Indeed I do. The day you wear your new Clippercraft suit for the first time... Your friends are likely to wonder whether you came into an unexpected fortune. Your suit will fit as perfectly and feel as comfortable as if it were custom-made. The rich-looking fabrics will give you long, dependable service. If your admiring friends wonder about your Clippercraft suit costing only $40 or $45, suggest that they drop into the independent store in your community that sells Clippercraft. This store is one of more than 1,200 of America's finest stores from coast to coast that combine their enormous purchasing power to keep your dollar from losing weight. That's why Clippercraft can offer you beautifully tailored worsted suits at an unbelievably low $45. Right now, your Clippercraft store can show you one in your favorite style and color. See his selection of top coats and overcoats, too, and see for yourself how true it is that Clippercraft values can't be beat. Compare Clippercraft with clothes selling for many dollars more. <laughs> Now, Dr. Watson, what's this adventure of the Uddington Witch all about? Well, Mr. Harris, it took place in 99, as I recall. Holmes and I were taking our ease at Baker Street one evening when we received an urgent and certainly a bizarre telegram. It came from Uddington, a town in the Shire of Lanark, in the lowlands of Scotland. And it was from a Lord Dunbar, master of Heathercliff Manor. It begged Holmes to come to the manor with all possible speed stating that a witch had spirited away his mother in the dark of night. A witch? Exactly, Mr. Hedden. A witch. Naturally, Holmes's curiosity was immediately aroused, and we resolved to take the noon train the following day. But little did we know, as we read the telegram, that tragic events were already in the meeting at Uddington on that very same evening. It began with Lord Dunbar in his study. Who's there? Who's there? Bruce? Hester? Why in blazes don't you answer? The minute I lock my door, someone has to disturb me. Well, what do you... <gasps> you! I'm... I, Lord Dunbar! I... The Black Witch of Uddington! I come to bring me the death of the witches! Dunbar! No! No! <laughs> Yes, I was in bed when it came. Positively ghastly, too. Seemed to come from Uncle Andrew's study. Oh, yes, Bruce. Please hurry. Something's wrong. 
Terribly wrong. Come on, Aunt Hester. Let's have a look. Here's the study. Uncle Andrew. Uncle Andrew. Oh, Bruce, there's no answer. Then we'd better look in. The door's open. Right. Good Lord. The witch's revenge. Andrew. Andrew. Oh! It's you, home. I was wondering when you were coming back to the compartment. Our train is due in Eddington very shortly. Unfortunately, my dear Watson, we're too late to help Lord Dunbar. Too late? What do you mean? I've just seen a copy of a Newcastle newspaper brought aboard at the last station. Lord Dunbar was murdered early this morning. What? Foully murdered, Watson. Found dead in his study with a steel spike driven through his heart. A spike? Good Lord. Does this method of murder suggest anything to you, Watson? Why... Why, no, Holmes, I can't say it does. And you're not up on your lore of demons and witches, my dear fellow. It so happens that the witches, as recently as 200 years ago, were believed to have tortured and stabbed their victims with pins, needles, and sometimes small spikes. Good heavens. It may also interest you to know, Watson, that the history of Lord Dunbar's antecedents gives this macabre affair a rather grim and yet fascinating twist. What do you mean? An ancestor of Lord Dunbar's in the late 17th century was one of Whitstam's most mortal enemies. As Chief Justice of the highest court here in the Scottish Lowlands, he hanged many a witch at Gallow Lee, or tied them to a stake on the sands until the tide came up to end their misery. Oh, Holmes, you're not suggesting that this is some kind of witch's revenge? I'm suggesting nothing, Watson, until I have a look at Heathercliff Manor and its remaining inhabitants. <laughs> Hey, driver. Aye, sir. When shall we arrive at Heathercliff Manor? If you look sharp yonder, you'll see the lights of the accursed house just beyond that wood. You think it has some sort of curse, then? Aye, as sure as my name is Angus Tavish. It's surely haunted by the black one. You see that wood now? Yes. What about it, Tavish? It was there that the Chief Justice, Lord William Dunbar, burned the famous witch, Isabella Whitburn. They say she stole a treasure chest of his and hid it somewhere in the wood. She was his cook, you see, and dealt in the black magic. It was there... Among those trees, the witches meet for the Sabbath on Rumor's Day. Aye, but you'll never catch Angus Tavis taking the wood road for the Black Witch of Arrington Rome. I'm driving you the long way around the moor. Well, I can't say I blame him, Holmes. It's the juice of dark in among those trees, I must say. <coughs> Good Lord, what's that? It's the witch, the cursed witch. Is she screaming and carrying on again? Tavish, quick, drive us through the wood road. Uh, no, 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 sir. There's no a time. fiver in it for you if you do. Uh, I wouldn't take that road even if you gave me the treasure chest the black witch fallen buried there. Come on, Watson. Let's get out of this carriage. Holmes, what on earth are you going to do? Quick, Watson, follow me. Run, man, run. If luck's with us, perhaps we can beard this witch in her den. <laughs> Yes, and you almost winged me with that revolver. Oh, of my, my, my dear fellow, you know, I... Oh, dash it all, I'm sorry. The truth is, I, I, I'm in a terrible sweat. I, I've been running through this foul wood, expecting every every shadow under every tree to lead to the attack. Heard any more of that screaming and tackling, Watson? Oh, that confounded witch must have retired for the night, Holmes. Hmm. Strange. Very strange. We've covered every foot of this wood. It's only a few hundred feet in every direction. Yet no sign of our cackling friend. Well, I might say, Holmes, I'd be just as happy if I never see it. Even the Black Witch of Addington, with all her magical powers, couldn't vanish into thin air so fast. And that maniacal cackling seemed to come from this grove of oak trees here. Well, I'd say it came from Hades, Holmes. The juice, it sounds as though she were being tortured and burned at some stake. Yes, a terrifying effect, Watson, and well calculated to keep the curious away. Come, Watson. But where to now, Holmes? Suppose we go to the house and meet its occupants. I take it you are Bruce Lennox, nephew to the deceased. Yes, Mr. Holmes, I am. And you have no idea what a relief it is to have you and Dr. Watson here. I, I knew my uncle had written you and... Quite. I might add, we arrived in a most unorthodox manner. 
of the small wood in the rear of the house. Yes, I heard the most terrifying cackling and screaming there, Mr. Glenick. Couldn't find a trace of the dashed witch. I know. Frankly, gentlemen, I admire you for your courage. I count myself as brave as any man and not addicted to superstition. But I, for one, never had the nerve to enter that wood at night. Uh, I can't say I blame you much. Now then, Mr. Glenick, a question or two. Yes, Mr. Holmes? Had the official police been here? Yes, this morning. But the local constable found nothing. Conducted only a hurried investigation. I am afraid he is as much frightened by the legend as anyone else. Perhaps, but at the moment I'm not interested in legends, but in facts. This chain of tragedy, I understand, began with the dis- disappearance of your great aunt. Yes, Lord Dunbar's mother. She disappeared from her room a few nights ago, and she's heard nothing of her since. You think, then, that she was taken by this, this black witch of Uddington? I don't know, Mr. Holmes. She might have just wandered off. My great aunt Emily, well, she was, shall we say, somewhat eccentric. In what way, Mr. Glennie? Oh, she kept muttering to herself, living in the past. Definitely unbalanced, Dr. Watson, but as far as I know, completely harmless. I see. Now then, are there any servants here at the manor? Only two. The rest have been frightened off. Who are these two? Cook and the gardener. And Lady Dunbar, where is she? I should like to talk to her. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. But I should not advise it now. Lady Dunbar is in her room, in this pose. The, the shock. Well, you understand. Quite. And now, Mr. Glenick, we should like to examine the body of your late uncle, Lord Dunbar. Good Lord, Holmes. What a ghastly sight. No wonder young Glenick excused himself the moment he showed us to the study here. A sharp spike driven directly into Lord Dunbar's heart. Yes. And with considerable strength, I might add, Watson. Hello, what's this? What's what, Holmes? There seems to be some fresh soil on the lower part of this fatal spike. Fresh soil? Quite. And observe, Watson, the peculiar shape of this spike. Long and narrow. And the remnant of a bit of string attached to the spike head. Well, I can't say I consider all this significant, Holmes. You know what? Oh. Come in. Mary Whitburn, the cook. Yes? Mr. Glenick roused me from my bed to prepare a hot supper for you. You'll find it in the dining room when you've a mind to eat it. Thank you, Mary. We'll be along presently. As you wish, sir. Hmm. Rather peculiar coincidence, don't you think, Watson? You mean Holmes? I mean this cook, Mary Whitburn... There's the same family name as the Isabella, Isabella Whitburn, the Black Witch of Addington. By Jove, Holmes, you're right. A remarkably ugly woman, too, with that mole on her cheek. Ah, yes, Watson, that mole on her cheek. Another peculiar coincidence. What do you mean? In the days when witchcraft was its heyday, Watson, every witch bore what was called a witch's mark. And usually, it was a mole. Holmes, you mean this cook, Mary Whitburn, might be the... It's a bit too early to draw any conclusion as yet, my dear Watson. But come, let's have a look at the garden. The garden? What for? I should like to examine the flower bed. Aha, look here, Watson. Holmes, what are you... Just as I surmised, note these spikes connected by string. The gardener uses them to take off these flower beds. By Jove! The spike used to kill Lord Dunbar is very similar to this. And it had fresh soil on it. Precisely, my dear Watson. The murder spike was undoubtedly taken from the garden. Perhaps we should have a talk with the gardener here at our earliest opportunity. <laughs> Holmes, good Lord! What is... A scream, Watson, and it came from the house this time. Yes, it sounded like a creature in torment. Holmes! Look on the second floor of the house! The light's just gone out in that corner room there! Quick, Watson, follow me to the house. I'm afraid the black witch of Addington has struck again. <laughs> How come such expensive-looking suits cost only 40 and $45? Well, that's what you may ask when you see the new Clippercraft suits, especially when you examine the careful tailoring details and run your fingers over the long-wearing fabrics. But it's no secret that the Clippercraft plan makes these remarkable values possible. And it doesn't take a certified public accountant to know how much money is saved for millions of family budgets when 1,200 of this country's finest independent stores from coast to coast concentrate their huge purchasing power. Yes, you'll have to agree, Clippercraft pure worsted suits are tremendous values at only $45.
And be sure to see the new Clippercraft zipper top coat that's sweeping the country. A smart, lightweight coat that becomes a warm, cold weather coat when you zip in the lining. It's an all weather sensation. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suits, top coats, and overcoats. In Manhattan, John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street. Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th. In Brooklyn, Abraham and Strauss. In Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark. And in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. And now, let's return to our story, Dr. Watson. Well, Mr. Harris, we raced back to the house, ran upstairs toward the corner bedroom, whence that agonizing scream had come. It was there we found Lady Dunbar lying across the bed with a spike through her heart. The witch, the black witch of Huddington Holmes. She, it has been here again. Yes, and with the apparent intention of exterminating the entire family. I, uh-huh. What is it, Holmes? Here on the floor. Observe, Watson. Well, it seems to be a bit of bark. It is indeed, Watson, an important detail of this hideous conspiracy. <laughs> Holmes, listen. Yes, the witch again, Watson. Here, over here by the window. You know, Holmes, Holmes, there she is, running across the lawn. You can see her there in the moonlight. Yes, now she's vaulting the fence with considerable agility, I must say. Yes. Now she's plunging into the wood. Quick, Watson, after her. And have your service revolver ready. <laughs> I, I don't understand this. Hmm? What do you don't understand what? Why, we followed that infernal creature into this grove of trees. We, we scoured every foot of it. And yet she's, she's vanished again. Hmm, yes. Holmes, you're not even listening to me. What the juice are you staring at? That large oak tree, Watson. A magnificent specimen, is it not? Note the huge trunk split toward its base. Obviously a dead tree struck by lightning many years ago. Oh, dash it, Holmes. I'm not interested in botany at this moment. My feet are soaked from the night dew on this uh, blasted underbrush here. And furthermore, we've, we've got some sort of black witch to contend with. Our... Exactly, Watson. Suppose we drop in at the gardener's cottage on our way back to the manor. I trust you observed it was situated on the very edge of this wood. No answer, Watson. As for the lights on, Holmes, perhaps the gardener's roaming around somewhere. Yes, perhaps. Suppose we try the door. Yes. Uh -huh. It's unlocked. Come up. <coughs> Everything seems to be quite in order here, Holmes. Yes, quite. I hope oh, someone's coming. Yes. And I fear we're in the rather embarrassing position of being intruders, Watson. What are you doing in my cottage? You are the gardener, I presume? Aye, I'm McCready, and I've no stomach for strangers coming into my house. Who be you? My name is Holmes, Sherlock Holmes. This is Dr. Watson. Yeah, we, we, we just found the light on, and the door was unlocked, and so we... Aye, aye, the cook told me you'd come on this witch's night. She's in a cursed house, and you'd best be off when she comes. We are grateful for your advice, McCready, but we are not ready to depart as yet. I presume you know that Lady Dunbar has been murdered. Aye, and the old lady, and her son, Lord Dunbar, before her. And the end is not yet, Mark Mac. What is it, Mr. Holmes? Why do you stare at my coat so steady? I note that there's a small blood stain on your left sleeve, my dear McCready. Eh? Yes? I trust you can explain it to our mutual satisfaction. Why, yes. I, I, you see, Mr. Holmes, I, I killed a weasel. It was a week ago, I think. A bit of blood fell on my sleeve, no doubt. Oh, yes. No doubt. Holmes. Dr. Watson. Oh, Holmes, it's Bruce Glennick. Greedy, have you seen it? Oh, there you are, both of you. Mr. Holmes, my aunt, Lady Dunbar, she's, she's been murdered by the witch. The black witch. Yes, Mr. Glennick, we're aware of that. You've just come from the house? Yes. Yes, I was awake in my sleep, heard a loud scream, and then I... Suppose we go back to the manor, Mr. Glennick, at once. Yes? Why? What? I should like to have a few words with your cook... Mary Whitburn. Young Glennick told us the cook's room was down this corridor, Holmes. Yes, Watson. 
A very interesting young fellow, Bruce Jennings. You should do something about his tailor. Eh? His tailor? Daisy Holmes, what are you talking about? His suit, Watson, and specifically that area of his trousers from his knees to his boots. I can't say I noticed anything, Holmes. Didn't you, Watson? Then you haven't used your eyes. The rest of his suit was well creased, but that area was out of crease and pressed. Well, what of it? Logic, Watson, logic. The most important indication of... Hello, here's Mary Whitburn's room. And the door's ajar. Hello, are you there? No answer. Suppose we go in, Watson. Holmes, look at this room. Yes, from every indication, our good cook with a witch's mark and a witch's name has packed and left in the utmost haste. Rather strange, isn't it, Holmes? On the contrary, Watson, it's quite logical. <laughs> By Jove, Holmes, uh, uh, the witch again. Yes, and this time, Watson, the chase draws near to a close. This time, if all goes well, I hope to meet this hideous witch face to face. Come, Watson, back into that grove of trees. <laughs> Infernal cackling has stopped. It has indeed. But the moon has emerged and we shall be able to see. Uh -huh. Here we are. Here's that giant oak tree again, Watson, the one killed by lightning. What about it? The lightning split it at the trunk. Note this aperture here. I still don't see why you're so interested in this confounded oak tree. Patience, Watson, patience. I'm willing to wager this tree trunk is hollow. If you'll put your hand through the aperture and tell oh, me. Oh, very well, Holmes, I'll do that. You know, but all this is rather silly. <laughs> What is it, Watson? I... I felt something. Well? Speak up, man. What? It's something cold. It's soft. Like a human body? Yes. One side, Watson. Let me look into that trunk. Uh-huh. There is a body stuffed into this tree trunk, Watson. Good Lord. The body of a woman, an old woman, and undoubtedly the lady, elder Lady Dunbar, Lord Dunbar's mother, and first victim of the black witch of Addington. You know, Holmes, this is diabolical. Devilish! Yes, Watson, we're dealing with a highly distorted and cruelly twisted mentality here. I... Watson. Yes, Holmes? Note the way the roots of this tree are curled upward and the earth upturned. Yes, but... but, but I'm willing to wager that when the lightning struck this oak, it created a natural cavity under the base of the tree. Holmes, what are you driving at? The final answer to this weird adventure. Come, Watson, we'll go back to the gardener's cottage and get an axe. And in a very short time, this great oak should reveal its secret. Hold on, Watson. We'll stop here where we can observe that oak tree. Yes, but Holmes, you said we were going after an axe. A subterfuge, my dear Watson, to deceive our quarry. We'll wait until that tree reveals the secret of the man who's been posing as the Black Witch of Addington. The man, Holmes? You mean the Black Witch is a he? Precisely, Watson. And to be even more explicit, I'm able to name the hideous murderer. Holmes, who is it? Quiet, Watson. Look at the aperture in that tree. By Jove, Holmes. It's a hand. So, someone's crawling out from within the tree. Yes. You have your revolver ready, Watson? Yes, yes, I do. There he comes out of that tree. Holmes, it's Bruce Glenick. Halt, Glenick, stop in your tracks. Come on, Watson. Yes. Holmes, he's still running. Far away, Watson. He'll shoot to kill if necessary. Good shot, Watson. You winged him in the leg. How is he, Watson? Uh, he's unconscious at the moment, Holmes. Uh, the pain, you know. But it's nothing serious, just a flesh wound. He'll come around in a minute. Hmm. Holmes, how did you know that the witch was a man? Elementary, my dear Watson. It needed a man's strength to drive those fiendish murder spikes so deep. And it needed the agility of a young man to hurdle a four-foot fence with skirts on, as we saw the witch do. Yes, but how did you know it was young Glenick? Yeah. It could be no one else than Glenick. You remember he told us that he never entered this wood? That he was in bed at the time of Lady Dunbar's murder? Yes. Obviously he lied. The fact that the crease was missing in his trousers from the knee to his boots was proof of that. The only way he could have lost that crease was running through high brush soaked with night dew. And the only high brush in the area is among these trees. By Jove, Holmes, you're right. He couldn't have lost the crease up to his knees by merely running across the lawn. 
But how you knew the wit, uh, young Glenica, was using that hollow oak tree as a hideaway... Again, an elementary observation, Watson. We pursued the witch and lost him twice in a small area of trees. He couldn't have simply vanished among the trees. Therefore, he must have been inside one of them. The bit of bark we found in Lady Dunbar's room was oak. I see. And after that, it was merely a case of looking for a hollow oak tree large enough to... Exactly, Watson. This tree is unique in that respect. Furthermore, Bruce Gennick tried to divert suspicion to McCready, the gardener, by using the garden spikes as murder weapons. Yes, but that blood stain on McCready's sleeve... Quite legitimate, Watson. The stain was old and dry, and its dark red color indicated that it had been on his sleeve for some days. He no doubt did kill a weasel, as he said. And the cook, Mary Whitman? Merely a terrified servant with a name fairly common to this vicinity, and an unfortunate mole. I can't say I blame her for leaving uh, post haste. Uh, ah, uh, our friend Denick is coming around. Yes, so he is. Holmes, why should young Glenick uh, murder the members of his family, one by one? I think we may find the answer to that, my dear Watson, when we execute our original errand and chop down that accursed oak tree. Almost to it, McCready. Hey, Mr. Holmes. There she goes. Watson, have a look down that deep hole at the base. Good Lord, Holmes. It's a great natural cavity there. It's the hiding place of Bruce Glenick. There's the witch's costume that he used. Exactly. Glenick had merely to enter the hollow tree trunk and slide down to the natural cavern formed by the upturned roots below. Holmes, look. There's an old chest down there with a the cover raised. And it's filled with money, with jewels. Yes, Watson, the chest of the original black witch... Isabella Whitburn stole from her master, the Chief Justice, Lord William Dunbar. And then she hid it here in this tree, back in the 17th century. Precisely. She died with her secret, and Bruce Glenick discovered it. And there you have the motive for his fiendish deeds, Watson. He intended to murder his family one by one so that he would finally remain sole heir of Hebbercliff Manor. And then he could claim the treasure for himself. Exactly. But there's a grim and appropriate end to this witch's tale, Watson. Bruce Denick is exposed, but he'll still suffer a witch's fate on the end of a good, stout Scottish rope. Well, Dr. Watson, that, that was an exciting adventure. Seems to me I'll be hearing screams and cackling in my sleep for the rest of my days. Yes, Mr. Harris. Even now, I occasionally see that shadowy figure racing across the lawn toward that dark wood. I must say, however, that the case left no after effects on Holmes. He had the ready faculty of forgetting one adventure and plunging immediately into another. And what is next week's story, Dr. Watson? It's called The Logic of Murder. And it concerns an expert on evasions of the law and a grotesque new theory developed by a gentleman who had performed 6,000 autopsies. So, Dr. Watson, we'll be waiting eagerly to hear your adventure with Mr. Holmes about the logic of murder. The makers of Clippercraft clothes and more than 1,200 stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detectives, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the program is produced and directed by Basil Lockridge. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by George Feldman. This week's story was written by Max Ehrlich, with special music by Albert Berman. you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Logic of Murder. Cy Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.